Hi, my name's Dan, and in this video, we're going to go over setting up the Bookstack theme system when using a Linux server Docker stack. Now, within Bookstack, there's various methods of customization and tweaking, and a couple of those are the logical theme system and the visual theme system, with the visual theme system covering everything like the templates that Bookstack uses to create the pages that you see, as well as languages and icons. And then the logical theme system allows changes in backend functionality within the kind of PHP logic that's running behind the scenes. And both of these different options kind of share the same setup and initial process because they're built within the same kind of idea of a theme system. Now, just to show you where I'm starting off from, I've taken the Linux server compose stack from here and then created an instance. So if I switch over to VS Code, you'll see I've got pretty much the exact same as what they provide by default. And I've just tweaked a few bits to make it run, including the URL. And if I switch over to the browser, we can see that instance running here. So it's just a plain, very fresh, bog standard Docker compose based Linux server stack. But now we need a customization to apply as an example so I can show you the process. So I'm going to jump over to the Bookstacks Hacks website where we have a bunch of different customizations listed here. And I'm going to go down and go to the simple latest pages RSS feed hack. And all this hack really does is adds a new endpoint to Bookstack that provides all the latest pages back as a single RSS feed. If you wanted to know more about this hack, there is a video linked within here, which shows the process where I built this customization. But I'm going to use this as an example because it uses both the logical theme system and the visual theme system. So if I click through on, I'll just go for this first one, which uses the logical theme system. There is some guidance within the Bookstack documentation about how to use this. But the main shared part for the logical and visual theme system is the theme folder setup, which is detailed down here. So this says that a theme folder needs to be set up when using the logical or visual theme system to achieve this, create a folder within your Bookstack themes directory. But when running on a like Docker-based stack, we don't have the Bookstack installation folder and the code base ready there to use. But lucky for us, the Linux server Docker stack does make this easy. So I'm, I'm going to jump back over to VS Code to view my Docker based stack. And one of the things that I'm doing is that I'm mounting a local volume folder, looks like app data, to be mapped to the slash config path within the Docker container for Bookstack. And you should have something like this already in your Docker stack, even if you're not using Docker Compose, because that slash config folder is where a lot of the persistent data for Bookstack needs to be stored, like your images and your attachments and things like that. And that's advised through the Linux server Docker container documentation. So hopefully you already have somewhere mapped up like that. But if not, make sure you've mapped up that slash config folder as a volume somewhere, because we're also going to need to go inside that, which we'll do now. So you can see I've got that mapped to Bookstack app data if i go into that folder then we see a bunch more folders that the linux server contains passing through but one of those is www and this www folder is where a lot of the books like specific files tend to be kept so if i open that up then this is where we can find things like the uploaded attachments or the uploaded images but the one that we're interested in is the themes folder. So this is the themes folder that's referenced within the guidance from the Bookstack site. So there's nothing in there at the moment. It's completely empty because we haven't set anything up. So to start off with, we will need to create a folder in here. So I'll go new folder, and then I'm just going to call this my theme. So we've done that part of the guidance. If we jump back over to the documentation, so we now need to tell Bookstack to use a theme via the app theme option in your .env file. For example, app theme equals my theme. So I'm going to copy that name because we're going to need to set that variable. If we jump over to the Docker stack, with this kind of setup, there's a couple of ways that we could pass options to Bookstack as environment variables. So we have the environment variables here, and we could add this value here. So app theme equals, and it'll be my theme, with this value matching the folder that we created. But the only thing about setting options within the environment of the container itself is that for these to take action, if there's been any changes, the container needs to be recreated. So the option won't take effect right away you'd have to effectively in this case because i'm using docker compose i'll typically do docker compose down then docker compose up again and that will recreate the containers when it sees changes because even if you just try and restart the containers i don't think that will take these kind of changes into account so generally i'm going to advise a different way unless you like all your options centrally managed and you're controlling everything via the kind of docker compose file or docker environment variables then you might prefer to take this approach just be aware you're going to need to recreate the containers but then instead i'm going to take that and i'll get rid of this line and again, within that www folder, there's a .env file. And this .env file is something that's referenced quite a lot within the Bookstack documentation, including this part of the documentation that we just saw there. And we can add it in here instead. So I'll paste it in there. And changes within this file will 
typically take place right away. And that gives us the advantage where if we have any problems with our theme conflicting, for example, we can just completely disable it just by commenting out that line and then that's your theme disabled. So if you're having some trouble and you think, oh, this could be my theme, you can just comment it out, save, and then see if the problem persists. But otherwise, with that set, that's all that we need to do. So it's set up, but we haven't actually got any customizations applied to test anything out. So let's go ahead and follow the guidance from the hack that we were looking at. So I'll close this back to our RSS customization. So the first one is a logical theme change for the functions.php file. So I'm going to copy this. And again, there is guidance if you follow through there, but we can essentially just create functions.php within our theme folder. And then we'll paste in that content and just clean this up a bit. If we jump back over, there was one other file. So this top one is the logical theme system, so it's doing PHP backend based code. And this one is the visual theme systems, which essentially provides a template for the RSS feed. And this just needs to be created in an rss.blade.php file. So I've copied that. And again, within my theme folder, an rss.blade.php file. There we go. And now let's test this out. So looking at the URL this creates is that slash RSS slash pages slash new. I'll jump back over to my instance and I'll append that on. So it is working, although we're not actually seeing any pages listed within this RSS feed because our book seconds is completely empty. So let me just double check by creating a page. Okay, let's refresh this. There we go. And then we're seeing the new item within this RSS feed showing that page that I just created. So that all seems to be working, but I just want to make another customization as well, just to reiterate the process, particularly from the perspective of customizing an existing template file that's a bit deeper. So as an example, I know within BookSack there's a template file that does everything for the footer content. So we haven't actually got anything within the footer here, but if we went into settings and customization and added a footer link like this, we go back and then we can now see that link appears there because Bookstack has a template there that goes over that option and prints out those configured links as a little footer. So as an example, we'll just try and put something custom within that area just to jazz it up a bit. So to override this footer template file, we're gonna to need to know where that footer template file exists and we're gonna to need to get the current contents so that we can work off of that as a base. So one thing with a Docker-based setup here is that we don't have access to the code. With a normal installation, you have the code all there so you can look through and copy an existing template file to use as a base. But those template files are within the container. We don't have easy access to them. So you could do something a bit more complex like mount extra volumes to get access to them or go inside the container. But another way you can view the existing template files is just to go to the Bookstack GitHub page. And by default, you'll see the code for the next development version of Bookstack. But I'm currently on the latest release. So that's 23.10.4. So I'm going to go up here on this drop down. I'm going to go to tags and then select 23.10.4. And then with that, GitHub shows all the code for that exact version. So from here, we can go into resources and then all the template files are within the views folder. And again, I'm quickly going through this process, but if you need to know how to use a visual theme system in more detail, consult our documentation. And then within here, I know that a lot of the common templates are within layouts and then parts. And then within here, we can find our footer template file. So this is the current content. You can see it's checking that setting and then doing a little loop over and creating links from all of the stuff in the setting. So let's override this. So to do that, I'll copy out the content. Then we're gonna to need to paste it in a folder, but at the right location. So this is within layouts slash parts slash footer.blade.php within the views folder. So if we recreate that, but from the point of the view folder downwards, not including the views folder. If I jump over to VS Code, go into my theme folder, and then I'm going to create a new folder, a layouts, and I'll create parts while we're there. So it's layouts, parts, and then it was footer.blade.php. And then I'll paste the existing content there. Then what I'll do just as a test above this, I'll create a new paragraph and go hello. And then let's go back over to my book stack instance and refresh. There we go. There's a nice little hello message. But let's do something a bit more fun. Let's get a nice placeholder image. I'll go back over here. And then right at the bottom, I think might look a bit better. Create a new div and then in there put an in an image. Nice wide image with a little bit of height. And let's just align it in the middle while we're here. And now let's see how this looks. We've got something, but it's a bit cut off of the cat. Let's see if we can improve that. We'll just tweak this a little bit. There we go. There's a bit of a better image of a cat. So now we've had this great enhancement of having a little kitty cat at the bottom of every single page within the system. And then just to show how we can turn off theme changes, if I go back over to VS Code, where I've got my content, and I go to that .env file where I've got that setting, 
and I can just comment out that option with a hash at the start of it. If I jump back over and then refresh the page, my customization has disappeared because the theme folder is no longer active. So that just about covers being able to use the visual theme and logical theme system via the Linux server container. If you're using a different Docker base setup, it's not going to be the same because different containers mount files in different ways. So there may be some similarities, but we all might have to consult their specific documentation to understand how they're mapping volumes to Bookstack folders, or if you need to do that yourself. But otherwise, I hope this was a helpful overview, and I wish you luck with getting started with your own hacks. But other than that, have a wonderful day.